This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We've talked through the bracket on both the men's and the women's side of things. It is now time to break down some individual games beginning with the round of 64 on Thursday. Here to break down those is Riley Thomas of FanDuel Research. We're going to break down his thoughts on the futures market and then talk about all Thursday's games to get Riley's read on the best values over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Saunas. I am a managing editor of digital media for a FanDuel research joined here today by riley thomas check him out on twitter at underscore riley eight he is a writer for us over at fanduel research riley it is a pleasure to get you back on the show here for today the most wonderful time of the year how you doing i am doing great thanks for having me on um yeah definitely ready to just lock in and watch basketball for an entire weekend i cannot wait It's going to be a good time for sure, but you know, we got to ask you about Kentucky because you're wearing the Kentucky swag on the show yesterday. uh, Kentucky drew the three seed in the South, which means pretty tough road. Uh, You've got Houston there. You've got a lot of other really solid teams in that region. So how do you feel about their pull overall at first glance? Um, unfortunately I'm a bit optimistic. Um, (laughs) because honestly, after the way they lost first round, I, I mean, as I said on the show previously, I like their chances to win the SEC tournament. Obviously, didn't even get close. Lost in the quarters. But um, I, I was expecting a four seed maybe. So I was happy it was getting a three seed, first of all. And then, I mean, Marquette has some injury issues, and they're the two seed in that region. We don't know if Tyler Kolick's going to play. I really have no issue with Oakland in the first round. Uh, the second round potential matchup with Texas Tech I kind of like. So I – I like their chances, and um, for some reason, they seem to be a hot pick to make the Final Four. I don't necessarily agree with that, but I mean, I'm pretty optimistic. I think they could be a second weekend team at least, so that'd be cool. Uh, I would not know what it's like to play in a second weekend, so I'm jealous of that for <laughs> sure. So uh, maybe Kentucky will get you there at least to at least make one half of the show uh, happy for this year's tournament. We're talking to Riley about some futures that he likes. Uh, probably not getting to Kentucky quite there, thirty to one to win the national championship. We'll talk about other futures he likes, and then dive into all of Thursday's games in just one second. But first, loaded feed for this week here on covering the spread. If you want full breakdowns of the men's and women's brackets, you can find those up here on. On the Covering the Spread podcast feed, FanDuel TV Plus, and the FanDuel YouTube page, the men's breakdown went up on Monday, talking with Dr. Ed Fang and Bennett Corcoran, breaking down their favorite bets or, or how they're viewing the brackets. If you're playing in some pools and want some advice on who to pick, who to fade, and stuff like that, check that out from Monday's show with Dr. Ed Fang and Bennett Corcoran. Then we broke down the women's bracket with Justin Carter on a Tuesday. That one is also up. Uh, talked about South Carolina, talked about Iowa and all the dynamics there. So find that on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, the FanDuel YouTube page, and FanDuel TV+. Plus. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can also uh, give us a thumbs up on the FanDuel YouTube page. Tomorrow, Aiden Cotter will be with us to break down his thoughts on the Friday men's round of 64 games. FanDuel's putting the ball in your court for the rest of the NBA season because right now, new customers get two. $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Bet the NBA with a wide range of bet types, including quick bets, live same game parlays, player props, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager. Only $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, North Carolina, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777. Over to ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700. Visit chaosgamblinghelp.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia, 
1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Now, Riley, we'll talk about some gains here in a second, but first, I did want to talk to you about the futures market because if we got you here, we might as well. Still one more day before the games actually tip off. So digging into futures first, anything you want to snag there before the tournaments get underway? Sure. Um, so as far as the national championship market goes, I'm not probably going to take anything there. Um, now, as far as bracket goes, I think I'm leaning Houston. Okay. But I have I have some issue taking like actually placing a bet on them. Um, just the way they were just absolutely destroyed by Iowa State in the Big 12 final. Um, I also think you could argue they kind of got some tough polls. Like if Marquette does have Tyler Kolick, that's a tough out. Mm-hmm. If Kentucky manages to make an Elite Eight, Obviously, they're playing well. That would be a tough out. I mean, they're inconsistent, but they definitely have the talent. Um, I could, I think you could even argue Texas A&M in the second round could be tough just the way they play and they have some guard play. Uh, Duke is Duke. If they see them in the Sweet 16, that still could be tough. They have talent. So I think UConn is also, you know, obviously a prohibited favorite here, but I just have a hard time like seeing a team go back to back just the way March Madness is also typically when you get a, guy, a team that has the first overall seed in the tournament also ranked first in Ken Palm typically doesn't go very well. <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of staying away from the national championship market, but yeah, it's I like Houston, but I'm not all the way into where I place a bet. Yeah, Houston right now, six to one at FanDuel Sportsbook. Betting them at six to one is very different than picking them to win it all. So I understand that the discrepancy there between uh, your two thoughts and the various uh, game types. So Houston, potentially Riley's pick there uh, to win it all, but not betting them at six to one. What about other futures that are up at FanDuel Sportsbook? Any value you do like there? Uh, one that I absolutely love is uh, Creighton to win the Midwest region. So to make the final four. Um Creighton's kind of been tricky, I guess, all year where they definitely have the upside. Um, I mean, for example, they're second in the entire tournament uh, with over 49% of their shots taking place from three. Obviously, you see a team like that, and if they're making their shots, they're scary. They have the guard play with uh, Baylor Shireman and Trey Alexander. Uh, their center, Ryan Kalkbrenner, he has won three straight defensive player of the years in the Big East. You think of a big guy that can defend. He also has size. I believe he's about seven foot, seven foot one. He has length. Why does that matter? Well, you have Zach Eady and Purdue on the other side. And, and, you know, if you end up seeing them, I mean, when have we seen Eady really face a guy that actually might have a chance one-on-one? So I think that's something to think about. And then if they get hot from three, and then I'm not too worried about Kansas with their, you know, injury questions like Hunter Dickinson. And I think they're, they lean very heavy, heavy on two players with uh, Kevin McCuller as well. Um, Tennessee, I'm kind of worried about them leaning pretty much their entire offense on uh, Dalton connect. So I, I really like Creighton's chance here. I think at one point you could even argue, say a couple weeks ago, they could have been a potential choice for the national championship because for example, like every champion since 2004, they've been top 40 in offensive efficiency at Ken Palm top 22 and defensive efficiency in Kempom. Creighton's like right on the edge of that. They're, um, I believe, 12 in offense and 24 in defense. So, I mean, before they lost early in the Big East tournament, they were pretty much there. So I think the upside's there for them to make a run to the Final Four. Right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, Creighton is 5-1 to one to, mid- to win the Midwest. Uh, Purdue is plus 175. Tennessee is plus 310. Um I am a Northwestern fan, so I've seen Purdue falter at times. I don't know if mm-hmm. Northwestern is for whatever, like their one, like uh, Achilles heel, or whatever it is, but like maybe that influences my view. But I do think they're like somewhat vulnerable, at least mm-hmm. as a result of that, especially if you got a guy, like you said, who can kind of match up with Edie. I think that's an intriguing one there with Creighton at uh, plus five to one or at five to one. We've seen Creighton compete with the big dogs already this year with that big win over UConn. So I don't mind that at all. I think that's pretty fun. Yeah, I think that UConn game carries a ton of weight as well. I mean, you saw it. They made threes and they crushed them. So yeah, I think it's there for sure. I, lo- I love the value. It's definitely high variance to take that many threes, but high variance is not a bad mm-hmm. thing when it's a high upside market, which is what uh, a Final Four type bet would be for Creighton. Okay, any other bets you like in the futures market before we talk about Thursday's games? 
Yeah, um, you know, it's always fun to try to pin down maybe a Cinderella that can kind of get far. Now, of course, this is where we get risky. But with the Sweet 16, I think you're going to hear McNeese and Grand Canyon thrown around a lot. Um, I mean, they've won a ton of games. McNeese kind of got a tough pull with um, Gonzaga. But I, I've seen some people say this. I don't necessarily think this. But some are arguing that whoever wins that Gonzaga and McNeese State game could make a run to like the Elite Eight. Do I think McNeese is that good? No, but I think a Sweet 16 might be there. And at plus 7, 10, I mean, you know, that's that's a big number. So, but I think the one I'm definitely looking at and placing a bet on is New Mexico at plus 250 to make the Sweet 16. Um, they're just, I, I've kind of really liked New Mexico for most of the year because they have a lot of balance. I mean, they have four guys that are averaging at least 12 points a game. And Jalen House, uh, their lead guard, he's been on fire in the uh, Mountain West tournament. The final three games, he was averaging over 20, uh, 25 a game. Um, so I, I just really like the upside New Mexico has with a really balanced lineup and excellent guard play. So I'm I'm looking at taking that for sure. All right, right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, as you mentioned, New Mexico is plus 250 to advance the Sweet 16. Now, and that's a that's a pretty interesting number for a team that is an 11 seed. Mm. What about their path makes you think that New Mexico can kind of exceed expectations and pull together a couple wins here? Yeah, I just I think the upside has just always been there with them. Just the way that they can score the ball, they love to attack the rim. Um, they just they have a couple of forwards that have some size that can maybe give some people some trouble. Um, like they have a true freshman uh, forward Toppin that. I mean, he has some versatility to his game that can have some uh, cause some teams some issues. Uh, their guards and uh, actually uh, Jamal Mashburn Jr. Shout out to Kentucky. His dad obviously was a <laughs> legend at Kentucky. Um, and then Jalen House. I mean, that's a really good backcourt. And I, I just love their balance. And I think that's something to important when you're looking at some of these you know, smaller schools is just the way they can score the ball. And if they can beat you in multiple ways and they're not, their entire offense is leaned on one guy. I, I think the upside's there. So I just, I really like their chances of just staying hot and scoring and just outpacing some of these teams. All right. So we'll see if uh, New Mexico can get there. Uh, plus 250 to advance to the Sweet 16. So the couple of futures Riley is in on here. Uh, Creighton to win the Midwest at five to one and New Mexico to make the Sweet 16. That is plus 250. Let's dig into some games now across Thursday, Riley. Let's start things off with the most robust slate. That is in the Midwest, where there are six games on tap for Thursday. Now, we're recording this uh, earlier in the week, so apologies if any numbers have moved in that time. When you look at the Thursday markets, Riley, where are you seeing value right now at FanDuel Sportsbook? Yeah, so obviously some great games. Uh, McNeese and Gonzaga, I kind of previewed that a little bit. That should be a fun one. Uh I believe after that later we have Samford and uh, Kansas as well. That should be a fun one. But I think the one I am targeting is the Oregon money line against South Carolina. Um, Oregon wasn't, you know, too great in the Pac-12 this year, but they got hot at the right time. And, hey, that's something that matters, right? I mean, you could have a team that struggle most of the year, but if they get hot at the right time, that's when you back them for the tournament, right? And I think South Carolina has been kind of suspect all season. They've been really interesting. At one point, they were nine and two in the SEC. Yet Ken Palm was telling us that, hey, they're like, you know, fifty second in the nation or something like that. So, I've been worried about South Carolina all year. Um, I mean, they come off a thirty one uh, point loss against Auburn. Uh, Oregon is not far behind South Carolina in anything. Uh, for example, number fire ratings has Oregon at fifty four, while South Carolina is fifty two. So they're pretty close. And I also like Oregon's matchup. South Carolina's best players are um, Michi Johnson at guard and then BJ Mack in the front court. Well, Oregon has Nafali Dante, which is, if you haven't watched him play, I mean, he is built like a unit and he's seven foot and just, yeah, he's a lot, he's a lot um, to handle. And then you have Jermaine uh, Kusnard in the backcourt for them as well that averages over 15 points a game. So first of all, they have their players that match up with South Carolina's best. They're hot. Um, also something else to think about is head coaching experience, uh, for South Carolina, Lamont Paris. He was at Chatt uh, Chattanooga between 2017 to 2022. He took them to the tournament once he has no tournament wins. Oregon on the other hand, they have Dana Altman, which of course has a ton of experience. I mean, he has over a hundred, uh, over 700 career wins. 
And he also took Oregon to the final four in 2017. So I think that experience is something to take value on as well. So especially with Oregon as the underdog, I really love that pick. Yeah, right now the Oregon money line of FanDuel Sportsbook is minus 104 for this game. That is the six versus 11 matchup in the Midwest. So you're in on a couple six seeds or a couple 11 seeds here between New Mexico and Oregon, liking Oregon to win this game outright in the Midwest over South Carolina. East Region has a couple, uh, four games to this uh, this Thursday. Uh, they got two seed Iowa State in action, three seed Illinois in action. What are your favorite bets across the East, Riley? I am really looking at Drake and Washington State. I think that's going to be one of the best first round games we're going to get anywhere. I am so excited for that one, uh, particularly focusing on um, the forward matchup between uh, Drake's Tucker uh, DeVries and Washington State's Isaac Jones. DeVries is actually uh, Drake's the coach's son. Uh, if you haven't watched him play, I mean, he's he's a bucket. I'm not going to make this full on comparison because this is obviously a big name. But I think his game reminds me a little bit of uh, Larry Bird. I mean, he's okay. just, you know, six foot nine forward that can really shoot the three and score a multitude of ways. He's a great rebounder. I really enjoyed watching him last year. And unfortunately, Drake didn't find the success in the tournament. And I think the same thing is going to happen. I think this is a tough first round poll for Drake, um, especially with Washington State to cover sitting at minus 102. I like Washington State to cover that spread because the odds there as well. I really like those odds. But um The rebounding battle here, I think, is going to be big. Both teams are in the top eight in the nation in defensive rebounding percentage. But where we get a, you know, maybe a big advantage is Washington State is a much better offensive rebounding team. I mean, we're talking top 50 in the nation, while Drake is on the complete other side. I believe they're in the bottom 30 in the nation in offensive rebounding percentage. So in a game that is this tight, Drake's probably going to look to push the pace and try to score. Washington State wants to slow it down and lean on the defense. I think that rebounding battle is going to be huge. I mean, if you have, say, Washington State manages out rebound them by 10 because of extra chances, they're going to be able to just sit and eat that shot clock clock up and limit Drake's possessions, really, and make this a low-scoring, ugly game. So I just think with Washington State's ability to really attack the offensive glass, I like them to cover. That is a minus one and a half spread right now for Washington State. The minus one and a half is just minus 102, though, at FanDuel Sportsbooks. So you're not paying a whole lot to lay the one and a half there with them. That is the seven versus 10 matchup in the East region. Riley likes Washington State to topple Drake uh, and cover a spread of one and a half there. Four games out in the West as well, Riley. Two of those have a very tight spread. So mm-hmm. let's break down this region. Where are you seeing value across Thursday's games in the West? Now, this region, I am a bit hesitant with a lot of these lines. Uh, I And I just say that because I'm very, very torn right now on yeah. Michigan State, Mississippi State, and then also with the other game that you said is close, Nevada-Dayton. I am so torn on both of those games. I think if I have to – right now, I mean, this is one that I might be changing my picks for both of these games up sure. until 10 minutes before the game step on Thursday. Um, but I think I'm leaning Mississippi State right now um, just because – the Bulldogs, they played really well in the SEC tournament. I mean, they just took Tennessee out by 17. Um, also, the fact that, well, that's even better. I just saw Mississippi State was uh, plus 100 on the money line. Now it's plus 104. That but helps. just with the spread being that low and then you're getting, you know, plus plus odds on the money line from Mississippi State, I'm in, intrigued to say the least. Um, yeah. I just think Mississippi State, they can really defend. Their defense looked really well and uh, really good in their first two wins in the SEC tournament. Michigan State's just been so inconsistent, really a disappointment this year. And, of course, everybody's going to talk about Tom Izzo, which I get, but they're not making deep runs every year. I mean, one year I think of is when they lost to Middle Tennessee State in the first round when they were a two seed. You know, they don't always just make these deep runs. Sometimes they're going to fail. So also Mississippi State, their duo of uh, Josh Hubbard at guard and Tolu Smith in the front court, if, you know, maybe for – fans that didn't watch SEC basketball, you may not know that duo, but me being a Kentucky fan, I've seen plenty of them. And I'm telling you, these guys can play. Uh, Josh Hubbard's a freshman guard. He's about 5'10", but he can shoot the lights out. And he's been putting up some big numbers recently over the last two weeks. Tolu Smith's been a mainstay for Mississippi State for a couple of years, and they can just ride him in the post and he rebounds really well. Um, So I I just think with the way Mississippi State's uh, defense has played and the um, tandem they have with Hubbard and Smith. I, I think I like them on the money line. 
Yeah, that's uh, as extended to plus 104, as you mentioned. That's for the Mississippi State versus Michigan State matchup. Plus 104 now for Mississippi State. And you mentioned what they did in the SEC tournament. How much stock do you put into those games, given that it is a neutral court, which is important, um, which is similar to what we'll see here? Uh, it's obviously tough competition there as well. How much stock do you put into conference tournaments trying to evaluate what a team will do in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, that's a great question. I think for me, um, it's more of the teams that were, say, playing for their tournament lives, really. Mm -hmm. The bubble teams that they're able to catch fire at the right time. For example, earlier I mentioned Oregon. Oregon yeah. was not expected to make this tournament. And then when it matters most, they go on a tear and win the Pac-12, right? And the Mississippi State, they were kind of in a similar situation where they're a bubble team. Everything, if they beat Tennessee, and uh, it was the, uh, the quarters, if they – beat Tennessee, they were going to get in. And what do they do? They beat them by almost 20. Right. So I think these teams showing that they can perform when it matters most. And I mean, really, they've been in elimination games, right? Like this conference tournament, these conference tournament games were elimination for them because if you lose, you're not getting in the NCAA tournament. So the fact that they're able to perform like that, I, I think that's where I really like to look at it is where you get these bubble teams that were kind of unexpected to be there when they just go on a tear right before. And obviously – seeing any team that's hot in the NCAA tournament is scary. Well, not a lot of teams hotter than NC State. So let's talk about the South right now. Just two games in the South for Thursday. Of course, we got your Kentucky Wildcats in there as they are taking on Oakland. And then NC State taking on Texas Tech. So just two games, Riley. Uh, any Anything stand out to you across those two games for, for this Thursday? Uh, even though the number is pretty high, I like the over for Oakland and Kentucky. Um, Honestly, I'm a bit nervous for this game for Kentucky, uh, just considering their recent um, recent history with the tournament. <laughs> Do I think they'll win? Yes, but I'm, I guess, a little bit worried just due to the fact that Oakland can shoot the three like really, really well. Um, they're in the 79th percentile on three-point shots per game, uh, so that worries me a little bit. But um, I just – both teams can really, really shoot the three in this. Kentucky leads the nation in three-point percentage, and both defenses can't really defend the three. Uh, you have Oakland in the bottom 15% and allowed uh, three-point shots per game. Kentucky's kind of in the same boat. They're around the bottom 50 nationally and giving up three-point shots. Both teams also have several players that can take over. Um, Oakland has – Three guys in Trey Townsend, Blake Lampin, Lampman, and uh, Jack Golke. All of them are averaging over 12 a game. Obviously, we know Kentucky has some guys as well, like Reed Shepard, um, Rob Dillingham. Those guys are potentially tracking to be top five picks in the NBA draft. Um, Antonio Reeves was a over 20-point scorer in the SEC. So just with the, the guard play, the way both these teams can shoot, and frankly, just they fail to defend the three, I think we could – see the scoreboard really get up there with the overhitting. Yeah, this number right now, 162 and a half for the Oakland versus Kentucky matchup. Big total, but it sounds like that's justified uh, well, based on what Riley is saying. That is minus 110. So the bets Riley likes for these Thursday games in the men's NCAA tournament, Kentucky, Oakland over 162 and a half, Washington State minus one and a half and minus 102, and the Oregon money line at minus 104 as well. That is Riley Thomas. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at underscore Riley 8. Find his work at FanDuel Research where you can find all of his writing for us all a lot throughout this week. Riley, you're a busy guy, so I appreciate the time uh, talking to you today. Good luck to you uh, with the NCAA tournament for your bets, but also with Kentucky. And hopefully we'll talk to you again here in the very near future. Thanks for having me. Good luck to everybody on their brackets. We need it. I will need it for sure. That is very <laughs> much uh, sure. As mentioned, a lot of stuff here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. Bracket breakdowns for the men and women. Friday breakdown with Aiden Cotter coming up tomorrow, Thursday, here on the show to get you ready for all the Friday games. It is going to be a fantastic week. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcast. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating. Or give a thumbs up over on the FanDuel YouTube page as well. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down all of Friday's games. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 